the rarest Gru comic ever appeared in 1988 as Dark Horse was beginning to publish Gru the Wanderer and Image Comics had finished its run. Wizard Comics published a four-page feature on Gru that included a three-page mini Gru comic. Hi, I'm Darren, these are my hands, and today I'm going to show you every panel of that comic and reflect on the irony that it was published in Wizard Magazine number 78. So, if like me, you don't know Wizard the Comic Magazine, don't worry, I'll tell you quickly what it's about. Wizard was published as a magazine for about 20 years between 1991 and 2011, and at its core, it was a price guide and comics speculation magazine. If we turn to the back, we will see this big section that goes on for pages and pages and pages. This is the Wizard Comic Price Guide. If you were buying comics, if you were investing in comics, if you wanted to know what your comics were worth, you could come to Wizard, the comic magazine, and find out. Now, it had regular features and stories, all sorts of other neat stuff. It had things on collectibles. And one of the things that it included was promotions for upcoming comics. Wizard was a little bit anti-establishment. It covered Marvel, it covered DC, but it loved to promote the smaller comic publishers, Image, Dark Horse, whoever they happened to be at the time. And so, as Gru was starting its Dark Horse run, Wizard Comics was there to promote. Let me just follow where my bookmark is here. Wow, look at that. Here we have a comic that I bet you've never seen before called Gru and the Glut by Sergio Aragonez. Letters by Stan Sakai. Colors by Tom Luth. Mark Evanier, the poet. This is a legitimate Gru the Wanderer comic published by the Gru crew, only available in Wizard Magazine. So let's take a close look at this comic. Gru and the Glut. Within the town of Ralem, they were proud of their success in printing handsome folios upon their wooden presses. I guess that was successes. Each printer took a special pride from deep within his heart to make each item from his press a special work of art. Ah, it has taken months, but I have produced a fine illuminated manuscript. That you have... Their work was so desired that a shortage soon resulted, and those who could not get the books felt angered and insulted. They offered higher prices for the special acquisitions, and soon the price was rising for the scarcest new editions. I must have that folio. I will pay fifty coppins. I shall pay sixty. Hmm, there is wealth to be made by obtaining the folios and then reselling them. Especially if we encourage the notion that they are scarce and escalating in value. The printers all grew wealthier, which was a great seduction, to put less care into the work and hasten its production. You are including less text in the folios. Our patrons do not seem to mind. They like the large, garish illustrations. And when they had exhausted all the stories worth relating, their choice of subject matter grew a bit debilitating. Tales of that idiot grew. Our patrons buy the folios to invest. They will not care. Most do not even read them. And soon the sellers found themselves with no one left to buy, for all had rare collector's books in plentiful supply. I am selling the rare first folio of Gru. I have thousands of them. Everyone has crates of them. And just when the investors feared that prices might come down, a most familiar figure chanced to wander into town. Now Gru was not the smartest soul. He never had been schooled. Ha! What an idiotic-looking mendicant! What an ugly oaf! but even he could tell when he was being ridiculed. 
Wait a minute. He did not have to speak a word he did not have to say, but from the look upon his face, his dog could smell a fray. The sellers ran in panic and abandoned their collections as Gru began to swing his sword in various directions. I will teach you to mock Gru. No, no, I do not read them. Neither do I. I do not even know how to read. The people were quite fortunate. He left them with their heads, but all the printed folios were burned or ripped to shreds. My books! I spent my life's savings on them! But then came a discovery, and all the sellers gaped to see that several copies had amazingly escaped. Six of them! Those are the only ones in existence! The prices started rising to a height beyond compare, for folios of Gru were now exceedingly rare. So, if you're seeking riches of the most impressive kind, then buy as many copies of this book as you can find, and if you heed my counsel and invest as others do, you'll be as smart and wealthy as a wanderer named Gru. The end. So how is that for a on-the-nose look at the comic collecting and speculation game in a magazine such as wizard the comics magazine that's all about prices in fact this story is so almost insulting and accusatory i'm stunned almost that it's in this magazine you know it's making fun of the wizard magazine itself for promoting all this comic speculation, but it's also making fun of the readers of the book who engage in this comic speculation, buying comics purely for the purpose of letting them accumulate in value and then presumably selling them off later. Now, I'll tell you, if you want to get yourself a copy of Wizard, the comics magazine number 78, you're not going to have to pay an arm and a leg. They may be hard to find, but they're not going for crazy high prices. And if you're looking to complete a collection because you love Gru, nobody's going to wag their finger at you for making this purchase. So let's take a quick look at some of the art and the coloring and, and see what we can really appreciate about what Sergio is doing here. One thing that stands out to me right off the bat is Tom Luth's coloring. I love how he is able to use bright colors to bring the main characters to the foreground, like Minstrel and the, um, what do we call these, the scribes, the printers, the people who are making these folios. And then the blues and the ready grays in the background that allow the workers to just uh, not fade into the background like they're there and and they're dimensional with the highlights and the colors but they're not distracting from the main action at the front here i love this coloring in the back i don't know that i have noticed tom using like these blues and muted reds brown tones like this in the past it looks really nice especially in this big first page it's really fun to see all the detail work that Sergio draws on the folios as well. All the heraldic devices and the gilded letters. Um, I don't know what the pictures are right here, but it's pretty neat. And then to see as the demand for folios increases and the printers saying, you know, it's easier to draw the pictures than to write the words. You see how it's turning more into a comic book style. I really like the artistry of this one particular printer. I love his big nose with the splotches on it and the bushy mustache underneath of it. I like this particular style that Sergio is drawing in. His pen work is getting thinner. You don't see quite as much weight and thinness, not as much of that variety in his line work. It looks a little bit scratchy. I love like the bulbous egg-shaped eyes that this guy has. 
his funny little bottom teeth. I think that this is a great looking character across this mini story. I really enjoy him. And of course, we all notice in the background of this panel, we've got Sergio drawing. We've got Mark writing out some scripts. We've got Stan lettering things. And then way in the back with his bushy mustache, we've got Tom and his colorful inks coloring things. It's neat to see. Got the bags of coppins. And then here comes Gru strolling into town. I love his uh, pursed lips as he's whistling along, walking into town here. Referto, his eyes are wide open. He knows something's going on. And then down here when we get our first big shot of Gru, I love the nose. It's bulbous. Sergio's drawing nice and cartoony here. That's great. Oh, is that Gru in the comic strip? Yes, it is. There's Gru again. Somebody's getting kicked in the butt. Really nice detail in the comics here. And then this drawing of Gru right here, as he realizes that it's, that it's him who's being ridiculed. I love the combination of Sergio's line work, especially around the eyes and how Tom has colored it. I love how his bottom lip curls around here and his teeth are almost bending in on himself like his fists are as he's gripping the folios. This is a great drawing of angry Gru. And then on the last page, as Gru gets to work, he begins the fray. He starts the fight. People are running. Scrolls are flying. I like down here, certificates of authenticity. Rare. This is just the comic book industry, isn't it? Man. And you know, I like my good quality comic books. I've got my Grus that I have bagged and boarded that are my keepers. And I've got my shoebox full of my reader comics. I don't have two of each comic. You know, sometimes I just have to pull out my only copy of Image Gru number 12. If I want to read it, here it is. It's the only one I've got. You know, I try to keep it in pretty good shape, but, you know, it's not graded mint or something like that. It's my comic. That doesn't make me better than folks who love to keep them slabbed. It's just, I think it's neat just to see the comic industry parodied in this story. And then, of course, we've got all the nice hatching on the smoke and the torn up folios and books as Gru walks away. I like his bottom lip here. He's looking back over his shoulder. So is Referto. He's going humph almost with the clenched fists and, the, and his big thick arms. It's good stuff. All in all, I think this is a really well-drawn mini comic strip. Of course it's well-drawn, right? But it's just so nice to see in the pages of Wizard this hidden gem of Sergio's, published in 1988. Now, I told you that in addition to the comic, there was this mini article about Gru. This is their striptease section, where they just answer a few quick questions about what this comic is all about. So as Gru the Wanderer is starting its Dark Horse run, the Wizard comic magazine lets readers know a little bit about the strip. Who? Gru the Wanderer and his ever-faithful dog, Referto. This is Gru. This is Referto. What? Gru is a barbarian who's very stupid, says creator Sergio Aragonez. But because he's very good with swords, everybody wants to use him to do their dirty work. But when you use a stupid barbarian who uses force more than intelligence, you lose every time. Inspired by the European humor comics he read when he was young, Sergio Aragonez, famous for his Mad Magazine work, created Gru in 1982 primarily as a humor book, but also as a social commentary. And of course, as the years progressed, that social commentary increased and increased and increased. The idea with Gru is to criticize everything, Aragonez says. For example, if I want to talk about deforestation, there's always some kook who wants to use Gru to cut down trees and evict the people living in the forest. He's just a patsy. He represents force without brains. Well, I suppose Sergio gets to tell us what his idea is with Gru. And if he says the idea with Gru is to criticize everything, who are we to disagree? I kind of hope that Gru is still about having some laughs and being silly and maybe criticizing ourselves, taking a look at ourselves and seeing our follies as well, rather than just pointing the finger. 
on his own for years, Gru adopted Referto, a pampered royal dog who was looking for a change from his posh lifestyle. Although Gru originally thought Referto would make for good eating, Gru and Referto have since become best friends and rarely think of leaving or eating each other. I like that. They rarely think of it. Legends of Gru's stupidity have stood for years, until now. All that changes when Gru gets smart. Well, kind of. While he becomes intelligent, he still gets abused by everybody, Ergunes says. It's my way of showing that even smart people can be very stupid in the decisions they make and the actions they take. His intelligence is artificial, so it's not going to stay. That's the advantage of writing a barbarian. He's not supposed to be too brainy. If he was, he'd hang up his swords and look for a better life which is kind of exactly what he does at the end of the Marvel run. Where? Gru's current four-issue miniseries from Dark Horse starts this January, and if you've never read Gru before, don't worry. Each hilarious issue is virtually self-contained. And that's the practice that's been going on since there. They're virtually self-contained. You could pick up, for example issue number three of Gods Against Gru, and enjoy it for what it is. But you're better off if you have the whole series. What's next? Following the miniseries, and this is the first Dark Horse Gru miniseries that they're talking about, look for Aragonez to take a break from Gru and do some new Dark Horse projects. We're in talks of doing a series of four projects in different genres, horror, gangsters, Westerns and romance, he says. All of them will use humor, of course, and I've got lots of Gru stories that I still want to tell. There will always be more Gru. Reporting by Matthew Brady. Let me put my awesome Get Into the Groove Gru bookmark back in here. And you know, while Gru and the Glut might be the rarest Gru comic out there, there are others that might be able to compete with that title. For example, Gru and the Kids Who Would Be Kings. Watch my video on that next. Please be sure that you're subscribed and have notifications turned on, and if you're saving your folios to sell at a future date, the algorithm thinks you'll want to watch this video. Take care, everyone.